Okay. Here we go. It says it is uh, streaming on Facebook. And actually, I'm going to press recording. Yes. So give a backup. <laughs> <I'm here too. laughs> okay. Welcome, everyone, to the um, monthly energetic explorations for evolution, transforming secrets, passion, and power. We are in Scorpio season. My name is Andrea Hyland. I am here with my co-host, Beth Terrence, Beth Shakina Terrence. And I'm going to begin and then I'm going to turn it over very quickly to Beth. So we'll we'll just dive in right now. You know, there's a lot going on in the world. There's been an intense energy with the eclipse and Scorpio season always takes us to the depths. So let's just take a moment before we begin to center and ground. And so what that looks like is I'm going to close my eyes and take a few breaths. And I invite you to join me in that. If it would, if something you would like or just know that that's where we're going to begin here. And just taking a moment to recognize that everyone who is listening to this, either live or to the recording, is we're in a big circle together. We're in a big gathering. And so just taking a moment to kind of let everything else go. Shaking it off, breathing it out. And then just feeling yourself connected to the core of the earth, the mother energy, mother earth, Gaia, knowing that in that center, we are safe and secure. You might imagine a grounding cord or a beam of light going from your tailbone all the way down into the earth. And then just breathing that energy in and out, slowly, deeply. And feeling in this moment that we are all connected, all connected to the core of the earth, all connected to any spirit guides, vibrantly well ancestors, trusted protector guides. That in this moment, we are safe. In this moment, we are connected. And so you can stay in that space and listen as I turn this over to Beth, or I'm going to open up my eyes. And Beth, Thanks, Andrea. That was beautiful. Um, so I'm just going to stop the share here. Okay. And um, so welcome, everybody. Um, uh, our, our season again um, for Scorpio season, our theme of um, this month is transforming secrets, passion, and power. And um, I know um, it's this time of year is a very intense time. I think many years with the eclipse season, um, delving into this Scorpio season, um, and then um, what uh, many uh, traditions around the world view as a time when the veils are very thin, when um, we're uh, the realms of maybe matter and spirit are closer than other times. And also, um, as we started exploring last month, 
um, as we're moving um, towards through into autumn, towards winter, there's a um, energy contraction that's happening. We're moving more inward and that creates, um, can create a lot of intensity around energy and emotion. I know I was feeling it uh, this weekend a lot with the full moon and the eclipse. And obviously um, there's so much happening in our world right now that is impacting uh, many people uh, locally and, and globally. So um, so just to honor that and be, we wanna just be present with that. Um, I wanted to, I guess, begin with a little bit of um, tuning in about the full moon and eclipse because we're kind of still in the energy of that. That was on Saturday, um, the eclipse at 424 p.m. Eastern time um, and the full moon energy um, we've been in, it's just beginning to shift toward, out of Taurus. So, um, you know, again, this... Um, this time of year, um, the moon is often called, referred to as the hunter's moon, and it's a time of preparing and moving inward for the winter. Um, and I guess um, I'm having a lot of thoughts on so how I was going to flow with this, um, but the full moon is always a time, a really powerful time for releasing and letting go um, and really illuminating and helping us see what's no longer serving us. Um, and that's amplified at the time of a lunar eclipse. So, um, so definitely that energy, you know, and that intensity has been there. And I know, you know, it, um, emotions can really be heavy and coming to the surface as well as um, just, I know myself and a lot of people I've talked to just kind of feeling this heavy pressure of that energy. So just to, you know, just know that that's, if you're feeling that you're not alone, I guess I want to say that. Um, and that also with the Scorpio energy um, of kind of uh, going into the depths of our uh, being and our feelings, that's amplified as well too. So, um, so just um, we shared a post uh, uh, in the Facebook group, and I just want to touch on a few things that the um, I mean the current uh, eclipse season uh, that happened this weekend is ending a cycle. Um, that was on the Taurus and Scorpio um, axis. And so we're in Scorpio so that even there's like, again, that there's a lot of, um, I guess, uh, amplification is the word I, I keep coming back to. Um, but that is sort of the end of a two year cycle started in November, 2021. Um, and it also relates to uh, being on the full moon in Taurus uh, at five degrees the last time that happened was October 2004. Um, so those are times to maybe reflect back a little bit on your life and what was happening then and some of um, the changes um, that are happening now um, or the inner work that, you're, that you've been doing to kind of integrate that. And so, um, you know, just kind of looking at some questions around that, um, you might want to think about what your journey has shown you during this time. Again, I, during either of those times, two years or gosh, 19 years, um, what lessons have you learned? Um, are there any feelings, patterns, or beliefs that you've come in touch with that maybe you're ready to let go of or um, to release in a bigger way at this time? Uh, you may want to think about any traumas or fears that need your attention and healing. And that, again, I think is really um, being stimulated by the um, events happening in our world right now, um, but there's the personal uh, and the collective as well. So to tune into that. Um, and then I, I guess just wanted to bring in our themes. I felt like that was important, but it was on the Taurus and Scorpio uh, axis. And so, um, for Scorpio, our theme is transforming secrets, passion, and power. And for Taurus, our theme was embodying beauty, joy, and compassion. And so um, just thinking about those themes and sort of um, maybe, you know, how you can step more into your power at this time, but also embrace um, your value and that beauty and uh, joy and compassion in your life. 
um, something to consider. So, and I'll share, we'll share those, some of those questions again when we share um, the replay in the Facebook group. Um, so maybe you've been around self-worth and value to really um, think about that. And is there something happening in your life today that you need to revisit um, that happened in the last two years or even looking back to 19 years? So, um, and is there any process of healing or transformation that can help you uh, integrate and complete the cycle more fully? And that might be something, you know, you work on, you know, at this time and with some ceremony or ritual, or you gain some clarity because the period of an eclipse, um, when we move through it, um, it's not just, you know, these two or three days, it will impact us, you know, for um, the next month or so, maybe a little bit more than that. So, okay. Um, and then another aspect of lunar eclipses, um, I think sometimes when we think of the full moon and the intensity and people feel overwhelmed and then same thing when it's eclipse season sometimes, but also lunar eclipses are really often seen as a time to celebrate um, to honor ourselves for our growth. And um, particularly, this is a time, again, that's connected to the harvest, um, you know, the kind of tail end of the harvest. So maybe, you know, really honoring yourself for the work uh, inwardly and outwardly that you've done um, this year and to celebrate that in some way. And I know um, sometimes we're in those, <laughs> we're talking about going into the depths, it's hard to feel um, like celebrating a mix that intensity, um, but to consider that and how you might incorporate that, you know, as you move through this month. Um, so uh, let's see, I want to just tune into um, Scorpio a little bit more. Um, a thought uh, that I really want to talk about related to Scorpio and, and also the uh, eclipse season is this theme of endings and beginnings. And when we think about Scorpio, we might think about um, the cycle of birth and death and rebirth. Um, and that's something that, you know, we're, we're moving through um, in certain ways through these phases um, or cycles, but it's something that we're also um, really can be experiencing at any point in our lives. Um, and we can choose to be um, moving through that more consciously or rather than unconsciously. So to just have that awareness and that that's really, I think, part of the invitation here. Um, when we think about Scorpio and its uh, element is water um, and we're kind of thinking about this idea of um, going into the depths that it's, it's um, we can kind of get like lost or hypnotized in the unconscious, but we're actually working um, to bring that to the conscious level as well. I wanted to read um, a quote that comes from Stephen Forrest's book on water. He has a book on each of the elements and then the astrological um, signs and planets um, and houses connected to that. I really love them. Um, and so this, when he talks about the Scorpio clan, he says, to cut through any realizations or defenses down to the raw, uncomfortable, emotionally threatening realities which lie behind what I am feeling, to be brave enough to ask myself hard questions and never to unduly fear the naked truth. So, um, so that's really, I feel like that's the invitation to really look and to listen and, um, Another thing that sort of really came presence for me as I was, and I was just having a conversation with a friend about this today, about, um, you know, when we think about um, Scorpio and the water element, it's about the emotions, you know, even in tarot, um, you know, the cups are, are emotions. And um, so um, it's about connecting through feeling and what we're feeling, not necessarily on the level of the mind, and so we really have to work to bring ourselves down from the mind into the heart. And that is, uh, I think, a big part of, uh, I know for myself, my spiritual journey. And I think um, just as human beings kind of living in a modern uh, world that's based on the systems of mind and logic, more than um, the energy of feeling in the heart, that that uh, is the 
um, it's a call that Scorpio asks us to do, and it is, um, and there's an opportunity to do that in a bigger and deeper way. Um, so, um, so just to begin to uh, open to that and to listen to yourself to, again, maybe there's a lot of emotions at the surface, or maybe they're there and you're needing to tune in more deeply. So um, to just really, I guess, listen on that feeling level, I think is really important during this time. Um, gosh, let's see. Um, and I was thinking about kind of have two tracks here. Again, we, you know, um, have touched on, and I think Andrea probably will share a little more about this too, about the veils being very thin right now. And so that is often a time where we're feeling maybe our ancestors, um, you know, spirit guides, perhaps um, nature, more connected to nature itself, and also pulled back, you know, into memories uh, from the past. And so um, that's part of this depth and exploring the depths as well. And, um, and sometimes our emotions, you know, related to that, there's sadness and grief and loss, um, which, which is connected to autumn and that, you know, that season where like the leaves are falling, we're moving, things are dying off, we're moving within. Um, so it could be a good time to work with that, those emotions of loss and grief personally, um, as well as uh, collectively. And Let's see, I might almost be done. I have a few more thoughts, <laughs> then I'll pass it back to Andrea. Um, so I guess um, mentioned about the mind and the heart. Um, I think as uh, our nature, um, again, as humans, you know, we are phys often we say uh, spiritual beings having a human experience, but in our need to navigate the day to day of life and outward. Uh, relationships and, and engagement, we do often, um, you know, have to put up some walls, we may even say, uh, fortify our energy. So we can talk about this on an energy level, um, as well as boundaries. Um, and that's something um, I think that also at this time, there's sort of some more fluidness with that, and that might be hard to navigate. So just be conscious of that. Uh, but also um, there's sometimes some uh, awakening or awareness that can come in that space. So to just be open to that. Uh, but also, uh, again, um, Scorpio is asking us to kind of maybe break down or transmute those walls, particularly with our own feelings and getting in touch with what we're feeling on a deeper level. Um, and then, you know, through that, knowing ourselves more deeply and creating, um, I guess what we might say is greater alignment, you know, with ourselves on a soul level. So, um, so that can be um, kind of scary and uncomfortable. I think sometimes, you know, our, our emotions feel like they're just going to be too much and overwhelming. And, um, and so, you know, taking self-care and, and creating the space to work with that and maybe getting support can be helpful. Um, so it is a really intense time, I guess, as I'm wrapping up my uh, share here, I just wanna say that it's always an intense time during Scorpio season with um, just the energy itself that's present uh, during this cycle with the uh, energy of the eclipse season, which most often coincides with the beginning of Scorpio season and then this autumn, you know, um, energy moving more yin and that contraction of energy. So it's really natural to feel intense emotions, to perhaps feel overwhelmed. Um, and sometimes, you know, again, our tendency is to just kind of want to push that aside, not deal with it. But now there's an incredible invitation to step into those depths to do our inner work and perhaps um, you know transform in a much bigger and deeper way um, and we often talk about on these calls about life I would say life <laughs> and energy being an alchemical process and so um, again there's this opportunity to kind of um, it's particularly when we think about 
I don't like to use the word negative, but maybe difficult or challenging feelings that we come in touch with, there's an opportunity to begin as we open to them and are willing to listen again to our heart and to our, um, our uh, soul to begin to transform or transmute those into more um, positive and nourishing uh, energies or emotions. And so through that, there's a gateway into our inner wisdom to really access that in a much, uh, much deeper way. I think to me, that's really the uh, invitation of Scorpio and to then create a deeper sense of harmony alignment with our essential self with our soul essence so um so i hope you'll take some time to explore that i just wanted to close with just a few themes that i shared in the initial post um, that i feel like to me kind of sum up the energy of scorpio um dive in deeper deep renewal transformation and healing vast cosmic movements reaching into the unknown, reclaim what is real within us, find our true strength, navigate the mysteries of life, trust your emotional movement and embrace your intuition. So with that, I'll pass it over to Andrea. Mm, so just taking a breath on that for a moment. Thank you, Beth. A lot of wisdom in your sharing. Thank you so Thank much you. for that. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna begin by sharing that when Beth and I first start we're talking about Scorpio season, the thing that was most on my mind was how we use or misuse our power. And then the connection between secrets and things that we're passionate about. So it's like hiding our gifts, talents, and skills instead of bringing them into the world. Like, why do we keep them secret? Like That was just really on, on my mind about, I mean, you can look at secrets from a bunch of different ways. I mean, I wanted to just begin by encouraging you to look at what you keep secret and why, you know, and I know part of it, it's on my mind because those of you who know me, the incubator, um, an online co-working space for women creatives is opening. And my intention is to hold a space for deeper conversations and a space to express our creativity and to bring some of it into the world in a bigger way. So to, to come out of the caves and bring that, um, you know, to explore it for the next four months. So that's on my mind. And also how we keep things a secret and private partly because it's vulnerable to reveal our innermost thoughts. And we protect instead of letting people see the mud, we protect these parts of ourselves but we also protect the shiny beings that we are. And I've noticed sometimes how I've seen people just, and myself included, walk in this neutral zone between our, our genius and our missteps instead of opening to share all of us. So I'll just begin with that because that was what was most on my heart and mind when we first started this conversation. And then something just shifted in the past maybe five days. And the thing that's most on my mind right now is life and death. Maybe it's between the compression of the eclipse and full moon, the thinning of the veils with Samhain, Halloween, Day of the Dead, Nordic traditions, the world events that are happening, anything that you, you know, you open to look at the news, maybe you get a little bit of a snippet and it's like we're in these conversations about life and death. 
And this morning I was walking outside with my grandson who's 17 months old and he's toddling around and a wind came in and leaves just started falling off the trees. And it's like, there's this vibrancy of leaves and colors and changing and they're falling off the trees now. So there's the ancestors and death abounds. In my personal life, there were two memorial services that happened this weekend on Saturday. There was uh, a friend and colleague's father who died at the age of 77. And then um, a friend of mine who was 64 years old died. She was this bright light in the homeschool community. And, and I say bright light because it was like this, this quietness that she brought into the group and still shining her light. She was, um, yeah, so the community that my kids homeschooled in, and she was a peace sister in a community of friends. She's one of those people who would get on Facebook and just post beautiful art and sunrises and sunsets and like she didn't shy away from so from that social media platform what she did was she brought in more light art books music um nature so yeah so life like celebrating life celebrating that artist person that she was and still has impacted and left that for people as a memory and then um the ending of being in a physical body which is death of some some sort i mean if anything the way nature is so alive right now and changing i've been feeling her even more here and i think that's part of the thinning of the veils that we feel people we feel the souls of people who have left their bodies are ancestors our friends people in our community people in the world but i wanted to take a few minutes also to talk about uh, a death that happened of a famous person um, who died on saturday his name is matthew perry he's an actor and the author of a memoir called friends lovers and the big terrible thing um, he died at the age of 54, drowning in a hot tub is what's currently reported. You might have known him from one of the TV shows or films he was in, like the show Friends. He was one of six cast members. But his memoir that came out last year covered his childhood, the divorce of his parents when he was one, living in Canada and Los Angeles, his desire, his deep desire for um, to be famous, like this ambition he had to be famous from the time he was a young child. And he talked about his addiction and recovery in the aftermath of a life-threatening health scare that he had in 2018. And during the book tour, at the, his book came out in November last year. Uh, during the book tour last year and part of this year, he talked about how he hoped that acting in Friends was not the way he was remembered. He wanted to be remembered for helping people to recover. And I don't know, that just really, like, you know, this person who wanted so much to be famous, and yet what he wanted was to talk about, like, was to take the secrets and bring them out so that he could help people. And that he hoped that people felt loved when they had contact with him. And I don't know, that part is just really touching me, you know, uh, whether it was someone, you know, personally, or someone who you had some, you know, you watched them in the public eye. But I admire him for writing about his struggles with addiction and the struggle of trying to fill empty holes with affirmation and fame. Like he revealed his secrets and brought us into his path of recovery and relapse and recovery. And 
like he talked about it. And that to me is why I'm mentioning him, not because he's a famous person who happened to die this weekend, but it was that he revealed things about himself with the hopes of making a difference in other people's lives. And to me, when I think of secrets and our passions and our use of power, our power, it's about just come getting in touch with what is yours to share in the world and what is yours to reveal. And we all have to come to that ourselves. Um, an article in the Los Angeles Times ended with words that he was a very talented, deeply funny performer, but more importantly, he was always obviously and unapologetically human. So revealing our secrets, sharing our passions, using our power for good, like this is our humanness. And what does revealing our humanness do for each other? Like that's a question that I'm really sitting with. And then honoring the timing of the revealing. So I'll just like kind of wrap up with two things. Um, Scorpio is in touch with the mystery of life and death. And I'm going to read some of the things Beth posted also, because just to bring it in, like to dive in deeper, this is a, this is a gift of Scorpio in this season, transformation and healing, the leaves changing colors and falling off is part of transformation, reaching into the unknown, you know, navigating the mysteries of life. And so I'll, um, I'll, I'll wrap with two things because I am going to, I'm going to read something that was on my friend Laura's um, prayer card, a, a small poem before I turn it over to, to Beth. But before I do that, I just wanted to presence that this is a time of year where there are these different holidays around honoring the ancestors and, and death. You know, whether it's All Saints Day, Day of the Dead, Samhain, Vetraneter, which is a Nordic celebration. And there are things that these different holidays, no matter whether you are, whatever your ancestors are, but there, there's like certain things that we, we do to bring in the ancestors. Preparing a feast, putting a chair at the table of your feast to invite in your vibrantly well ancestors. Um, lighting a candle with pictures of your loved ones, making a toast to your ancestors. So as much as like I have felt teary talking about death, there's also the celebrating of life that is part of death. Honoring deities that are connected with your lineage, expressing gratitude for the harvest. Yeah. So I'll take a breath on that, and then I'll read what was on the back of the prayer card. Grief can be the garden of compassion. If you keep your heart open through everything, your pain can become your greatest ally in your life's search for love and wisdom. That's by Rumi. Fully give yourself permission to walk in your greatest light, to follow your soul's calling, and return to your divine presence. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. So honoring our ancestors, honoring the depth of our gift of being able to feel. I'll end with that and pass it over to you, Beth. Thank you for sharing that. Breathe for a minute before we go on. Well, and, you know, I'm one who does go into the depths and I'm fine with sitting in, in the grief. And I feel in this moment that to bring, to lift the energy up a little bit, I will just say, 
that I have colored conditioner, colored <laughs> green in my hair in honor of my great great grandmother lines in Sweden and the uh, what I call the plant magicians, those who used herbal medicines as part of their healing. And so, yes, I will claim that and honor them with the celebration of green tinted hair. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> um, I feel like we should just mention our trip too before we go on. Andrea, um, I was going, uh, I guess, was it last week or two weeks ago? I guess, no, two weeks ago now. Yeah, um, to up to Massachusetts for a conference for Bach flower um, uh, practitioners and, and instructors. And Andrea came on a road trip with me up to Andover, Massachusetts, which is near where she lived, I guess, at some point. And family, her family's from that yeah. region. Yeah. Yeah, families from and, there. Um, and then we went to Salem one night. So, tis the season. <laughs> that was, yeah, very interesting. And uh, felt like a, in sort of alignment to be in that space around this time of year too mm -hmm. um, and then did some beautiful hiking up at one of my favorite places Lake Minnewaska in upstate New York um, so um, but I think throughout that trip we were kind of in our conversations you know kind of preparing for today and and tuning into these energies that are present and particularly you know kind of how to flow with all that uh, is arising during this time. And I think one of our big intentions in creating this space uh, is to kind of expand out what we've been cultivating together uh, in terms of just having people and having a space to talk about what we're experiencing as we go through different, um, you know, the different energetic shifts that ha are happening all the time in the seasons. And so particularly, um, uh, you know, it's just so natural um, to feel more grief or have it come to the surface at this time, whether you've had a loss or recent loss or it's just surfacing. So um, it took me a long time to become conscious of that. Uh, and I, when I was younger, really struggled. It was probably uh, one of the times of year where I went into my deepest depression. And I can say, honestly, at certain times felt almost suicidal uh, at this time of year. And it really took healing in a lot of different ways and through my, you know, shamanic healing um, and, and energy work and trauma healing too. But it, it, it was really in terms of beginning to understand the uh, energetics and what's happening every year. And like that there, you know, there's just, this is gonna get stirred every year in this way. And how do I, you know, stay present with that and how do I support myself through that time? So I um, just want to put that out there that it's not uncommon to feel that degree of intensity. And, um, and it, in a way, again, um, you know, we're each having our own individual experience, but there's collective things we're experiencing emotionally and energetically. And so um, just to be in tune with that and um, connect and share and that's part of I think that opening you know in terms of rather than keeping it in the secrets that we're having we're experiencing this and you know to in varying degrees of intensity so yeah thanks Beth yeah yeah so um so it's just going to lead us in a short um practice uh of metta meditation of loving kindness meditation um first um to connect and just kind of nurture ourselves uh, which is at the heart of metta practice um, for folks who aren't familiar it's a buddhist uh, practice that is focused on loving kindness and compassion and it's um, understood that in order to really uh, cultivate and share those energies with others we need to um, we need to initiate that in ourselves to start so we'll begin there um, but to also use it as a space to connect with our ancestors or um, spirits that we uh, want to connect with loved ones, maybe who've lost friends or family or even pets. And, and so just to hold the invitation, um, you may already um, 
whether you're kind of conscious of it or not, maybe had some memories in the last, you know, few days or weeks. I know uh, my one cat, Percy, he just popped in really strongly the other day. Um, and I was like, oh, he's Percy's visiting me this time of year and, and a good friend. Um, I also had um, uh, uh, the elder um, of my father's uh, uh, line, my paternal lineage passed away um that we've got a week a little more than a week ago so i've been present with that as well so um you may have had sort of some memories or things you know happening in your life that um that kind of have already awakened that and we'll have the invitation and the practice as we go too so okay so i invite you to find a comfortable position um, you can have your feet flat on the floor, um, your spine straight, but not tense, and just kind of relax your body um, in a way that feels comfortable. Um, I'll invite you to close your eyes if you are comfortable, as I'll do, or just have a soft gaze on the floor in front of you. And let's begin with a few deeper breaths, just breathing in for a count of four and out for a count of four. Just letting your body and your mind just begin to slow down, unwind. Settle in this moment. I invite you, if you'd like to place a hand on your heart on your heart center, right in the center of your chest. And as you're taking those few breaths, just kind of pat your heart gently. You can do it physically or just feel it energetically. Just letting it know that you're here, that you're listening, that you're tuning into what it's holding. knowing that it may have much to share with you. And this practice is more about just nurturing ourselves and connecting with our ancestors, with our supporters, but to help open that space of connection. You may come back for some deeper listening later today or in the next few days. You move through Scorpio season. Keep your hand there or let it drop. And then I'd like you to now call on a being. This can be uh, a real uh, a person in your life, living or past, maybe a spirit guide. Who, when you think of this person, you feel a sense of unconditional love of really that strong heart connection that you just feel that warmth almost melting when you think of this person that you feel love and support and connection with them it should be only positive feelings so maybe for me I often call my grandma Clara who is just the most nurturing person in my life it can even be an animal a pet or a element of nature like a tree or a favorite place just calling on one being or energy that you really feel that sense of unconditional love connection and imagine that you're sitting across from this person this being feeling their heart connection from your heart to their heart and their heart to your heart just breathing that in for a few moments. Letting it really awaken that energy of love and kindness and compassion within you. Really letting yourself become filled with it. As deeply as you can.
And then offering yourself some phrases of metta or loving kindness. I'll say each one and you could repeat it uh, silently after me. So it's just a way to continue to expand that energy and that offering to yourself as a foundation. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free of suffering. May I have ease of well being. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be free of suffering. May I have ease of well being. So, really allowing that to fill every atom and cell of your being with this energy of loving kindness and compassion. Thanking your loving being for coming and supporting you. And they may stay in this space with you as they feel to, as you feel to have them with you. Now I'd like you to envision yourself filled with this energy of loving kindness and compassion, sitting somewhere by a fire. Perhaps it's sitting by your fireplace or sitting by a fire pit or chimney outside your house. Could be a favorite place where you've sat by a bonfire, maybe even a place where your family once gathered. Just take a moment and really envision yourself sitting by that fire Seeing the flames, feeling the warmth of the heat. In many traditions, it's said that when our ancestors, when our loved ones pass, come to visit at this time, they come and sit with us. They gather by the hearth or the fire. So I'd like you to just begin to invite any ancestors any friends or loved ones past who you maybe have already been feeling this week or just allow them to come in the moment. They may come one by one, perhaps as a group. Just inviting them to come and sit with you by this fire. Just be open to who comes. And if it's not clear, just know they're there with you or you're holding that invitation. You may feel feelings of sadness or vulnerability bubble up and that's okay. It's part of that heart connection. So as you sit with your loved ones, your ancestors, a moment to thank them for coming, for being a part of your life, of your journey, becoming who you are today. You might ask if there's any guidance or wisdom they have to share with you at this time.
And then remembering that loving kindness and compassion that you've generated within yourself. Take a moment, breathing into your heart center again. Really feeling that energy in your whole body, your whole being, every atom and cell filled with loving kindness and compassion. Begin to radiate that out to your loved ones, your ancestors, anyone who's come to sit with you by your fire. You may feel a line of energy going from your heart to the heart of each being who's with you. And then offer some of the phrases, just continuing to send that energy to them. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free of suffering. May you have ease of well being. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free of suffering. May you have ease of well being. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free of suffering. May you have ease of well being. And for a moment, silently just feel yourself offering that energy and receiving it as well. Once again, thanking all of your visitors, whether they be ancestors or friends or other loved ones, beloved pets. Coming and being with you. Knowing that connection is always there. Maybe you feel it more strongly in this moment, but it's always there. And you may continue to work with them over the next few days. May this have been your visit for this year. Just thanking them, honoring them. And taking some breaths again. Just really feeling your body as you breathe. Letting all of the imagery go for this time. Feeling the rise and fall of your chest. Feeling the earth beneath your feet. And as we come back, still feeling that fullness of loving kindness and compassion that we've generated, that we've received, we've shared. Let's take a moment together to just offer that energy. Asking that the benefit, that the merit of our practice be for our own highest good. 
for our loved ones and for all beings. And sending it out wherever it needs to go in this moment in the world. Whomever most needs it. And if you feel guided to send it to a specific place, person, you can do so. You can even imagine holding the world in your hands and just sending that energy so that it fills, fills all beings. May all beings be happy. May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be free of suffering. And may all beings have ease of well being. Take your time coming back again. Move your body, have a sip of water, take some deeper breaths. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. feel like that was the perfect practice for everything that's happening in the world and you know wondering what it is that we can do at times it's it's a simple practice like this yeah so much depth and care and love yeah so thank you yeah thank you I. I know you know I have a poem to close. <laughs> but anything else you want do you want to share before we wrap up? I I'm kind of going back and forth because I did have an inspiration to just sing for 10 to 15 seconds. Uh mm -hmm. so now that I've said it out loud, I'm gonna just do that. It's, mm -hmm. it's the a call, which is a kundalini chant for assisting spirits, souls to cross over. <clears throat> a call, a call, a call, a call, a call, a call. A call. And just as a reminder, sometimes using our voice in song or prayer is another simple way of acknowledging the unseen spirits and souls of the world and assisting them in their own healing, mm -hmm. moving on to the next. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beth. I feel complete. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, um, yeah, just to be gentle with yourself during this time and others around you. And um, it is, a, I think, in this time of going within into the depths of potent time, uh, probably always, <laughs> but to do meditation and maybe um, some ceremony or ritual and um, definitely some journaling, you know, and tuning into what you're feeling and um, uh, in, in terms of those uh, depths of emotions to encourage you to do that during this time. Um, and with that, I have a poem, I usually bring a poem to close 
don't always bring one that I wrote, but it, this one is one I wrote a number of years ago and it's um, called Halloween Night. And I thought as we're moving into Halloween uh, tomorrow, um, it would be just fitting to share. It's a little bit uh, relates to our theme and maybe I think it's a little lighthearted too as we wrap up. So Halloween Night. Winds blow wildly on this fall night. Leaves glisten in supernatural light. Spirits soar and witches fly in the eerie Halloween night sky. Darkness foretells autumn's end, inviting its chilly winter friend. Ancient stones call it New Year's Day from times of living a pagan's way. Fairies and goblins fill the air, frightening children with a scare. The dead come home to see their kin sit by the fire and warm their skin. We mask ourselves in costumes all night to hide our souls and dwell in the light. Bonfires glow and show us the key, divining our fortune and destiny. Trick or treat, candies and sweets, jack-o'-lantern blues, we parade and dance and party until the saints come marching through. One of my few rhyming poems, I'll say. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe Thank the you. only. <laughs> Thank you. It was fun. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks. <laughs> So, all right, everybody. Um, well, thank you so much for tuning in. I know probably most folks will be watching the replay um, in the Facebook group. We will also be posting it on our YouTube channels and we'll share some um, highlights from the session, some of the reflection questions and, and suggestions um, for practice as well there in the Facebook group. Okay, thank you. Bye everyone. So long. Bye-bye.